which of the structures shown here represent a linear molecule? A, 1 and 2, B, 2 and 3, C, 3 and 4, or D, 1 and 4. If a molecule or ion has only three atoms, then its shape can be described in only two ways, either linear or bent. If the shape is linear, you can draw a straight line through all three atoms. Otherwise, it's bent. We can use the Lewis structures to determine if the shape is linear by determining the steric number for the central atom. If the steric number is 2 or 5, it is linear. If the steric number is 3 or 4, then it is bent. The steric number of an atom is the number of regions of high electron density around the atom. It's the total number of bonds and lone pairs. Each single bond counts as one region. Each lone pair also counts as one region. A double bond counts as just one region as well, and so does a triple bond. So let's examine the structures shown here. The central atoms for our four structures are carbon for hydrogen cyanide, carbon for carbon dioxide, oxygen for water, and sulfur for the sulfur dioxide. Let's determine the steric number. For the carbon atom in structure 1, the steric number is 2. The single bond counts as one region of high electron density, and the triple bond counts as another. How about structure 2? This double bond on the left counts as one region of high electron density, and the bond on the right counts as another. Therefore, the steric number for the carbon atom in structure 2 is also 2. There are two groups of electrons sticking out of the carbon atom. For structure 3, the steric number is 4. There are four groups of electrons sticking out of the oxygen. 1, 2, 3, and 4. The steric number of the oxygen atom in water is therefore 4. Finally, for the sulfur atom in structure 4, the steric number is 3. 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Of the four molecules given here, only hydrogen cyanide and carbon dioxide are linear. Let's try to understand how the steric number determines the shape of our triatomic molecule. The explanation is actually quite simple. We know that electrons repel each other. Therefore, we expect regions of high electron density around an atom to be as far away from each other as possible. This idea is known as VSEPR theory. VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. Let's examine the possible cases where the steric number is 2. Here we have three possible ways that an atom, X, can have a steric number of 2. In order for two regions of high electron density to be as far away from each other as possible, they must be oriented 180 degrees apart. In other words, they must be sticking out of the atom in completely opposite directions. It can have two single bonds and no lone pair, as in the example beryllium hydride. Or it can have two double bonds, as is seen in carbon dioxide. Or it can even have a single bond and a triple bond, seen in hydrogen cyanide. Let's examine what happens if the steric number is 3. There will be three groups of electrons sticking out of the central atom. In order to be as far away from each other as possible, the groups must be oriented 120 degrees apart if the three groups are identical. If they are not, as in the case shown here, the angles would still be very close to 120 degrees. We say that the central atom in this case has a trigonal planar geometry. The groups of electrons sticking out of the central atom are all on the same plane and are pointing towards the corners of the triangle. Since a triatomic molecule has only three atoms, only two of the three groups can have an atom on the other side, and one of the groups must then be a lone pair. For example, in sulfur dioxide, where the sulfur atom is the central atom, the two oxygen atoms would be located here and here. If we were to trace a path from, from one oxygen through sulfur to the other oxygen, we can see that the atoms are not all in one line. This molecule, we say, is then bent. 
Why is the triatomic molecule or ion bent steric number of the central atom is 4? According to the VSEPR theory, four regions of high electron density would need to be oriented towards the corners of a tetrahedron in order for them to be as far away from each other as possible. But what is a tetrahedron? Imagine a cube. If we put our central atom in the middle of this cube, then the four corners of the tetrahedron are indicated here by the green circles. Since we're dealing here with a triatomic molecule, only two of these corners would have an atom. If we trace a path from any corner of the tetrahedron through the central atom to another corner, we can see that the three atoms are not in a straight line. For a perfect tetrahedron, the angle that we trace is in fact very close to 109.5 degrees. We get a perfect tetrahedron if all four groups sticking out of the central atom are identical. In the case of water, they are not. Two are single bonds and the other two are lone pairs. The lone pairs exert a stronger repulsion on neighboring groups than the single bonds. As a result, the HOH angle in water is 104.5 degrees. In case you're wondering about the origin of the term tetrahedron, here's what a tetrahedron looks like if we carve it out of our cube. You can see that it is a perfectly symmetrical pyramid. The four faces are equilateral triangles. Tetra is Greek for the number four, and hedron is Greek for size. A tetrahedron is a four-sided figure. Let's relate this to the cube. To find one corner of a tetrahedron, pick any one of the corners of the cube. You'll notice that three faces of the cube intersect at this corner. To get to the other three corners of the tetrahedron, simply imagine a diagonal line starting from the corner you picked through each of these faces. Through this face, and this one. Why is the molecule linear if the steric number of the central atom is 5? According to the VSEPR theory, if you have five groups of electrons sticking out of an atom, they will be oriented towards the corners of a trigonal bipyramid. Here's what it looks like. Three of the groups are on the same plane, 120 degrees apart from one another. These three groups point to the corners of a triangle. Two of the groups are perpendicular to the equilateral groups, one directed upwards and the other downwards. An example of an ion with this geometry is ICl2 with a negative one charge. The ion has five groups sticking out of the central atom, two single bonds and three lone pairs. Because lone pairs repel other groups more strongly than single bonds, they take up the equatorial positions. The equatorial positions are spaced farther apart. So if you imagine iodine in the center of the earth, the lone pairs will be sticking out towards the equator, and the single bond to the chlorine atoms will be directed toward the north pole and the south pole. If we retrace a path from one chlorine atom through the central atom, and to the other chlorine atom, we can see that this ion is also linear.